hello and welcome. This month I'm just, I'm not doing like little tutorials on how to do basic little things. What I'm doing is, is I'm actually just going to sit down and write applications and have you guys watch me write these applications uh, so you can see the process. And I'm going to go kind of quick, especially in this one because it might be a little bit longer. But quickly to review, we're going over uh, a different interface for basically what we did last week uh, or last video. Uh, which was this little uh, bash script, this little shell script here, uh, which when I run, it asks me who I am, which I have a filterable sh search list here using Fuzzy Finder. I can choose who I am, and then it's going to start going through a predetermined list of checklist items, uh, which I can just easily go through. If there's a problem, I can mark it. If there's uh, not applicable, not applicable, I can make it not applicable, and I can go through. And then that adds all that to a uh, log file, uh, .csv. Uh, which can also be opened up in a spreadsheet program like Excel or Libre uh, Office's Calc. Uh, but we're going to do one that is a GUI interface today. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And again, I'm going to go kind of quick and I'm going to be using a lot of templates I've created because when you do programming, you do a lot of repetitive stuff, especially when it comes to user interfaces. So whatever you use, I use Vim as my, my text editor, whatever you use, hopefully it allows you to create shortcuts to simplify stuff. And I'm not just talking about like auto completion of a line or a tag, uh, but you should be able to have a, hit a couple of keys and just dump in templates that you've created. Uh, let me back out of here. And for example, um, I have a little script I wrote that pulls a template, a base template for HTML projects, uh, and I can pull that with git dot or git or HTML git is the name of my script. This is up on my GitLab page, uh, as well as all my other shortcuts are mainly for Vim. You can find it on my GitLab page. Check out the links in the description of this video or my website filmsbychris.com, uh, and it's my Vim templates and setup is called my Vim setup. I think is what I call it. Uh, so you should be able to search for it there. But basically I just uh, type in HTML git and the name of my project, which in this case, I'm just going to call checklist underscore two because we already did checklist underscore one. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull down some templates and put it in a folder called that. And I can now move into that. And here we go. This is my base uh, HTML with some Twitter bootstrap and jQuery scripts as well as some CSS. Uh, that I use regularly. Let's go to my web browser here, and this is my web server. It's a blank page. Let's go ahead and open up our index page, and I'm gonna go down here first. So let's give the page a title. We'll just call it checklist. We'll call it checklist two, or checklist version 2.0, just to be cool. Okay, come down here to my little center main class row, and I'm just gonna put a simple little header in here. So I'm just gonna say H1 for my tags, with nice big words, and we're just gonna say checklist. Now if I come back here and refresh, you can see we have checklist. I'm gonna come in here, and again, I'm going fast, just because this is more of a demonstration than anything. I did a horizontal line break, so we have a little line there. Right there, should show up in the video. Uh, and now let's start creating a checklist. Now, you can very simply uh, make a checkbox, but we want just any regular checkbox. We want nice looking checkboxes that are easy to click. They're big so you can click them with your finger on a phone. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is where some of my templates come into play. So this is a uh, bootstrap. So I'm gonna say BT and I'm going to go to um, my checkbox here. Boom, indent everything properly. And there is my primary checkbox, check. Ding! Okay, it's checked. Now we need to be able to submit that and we need to submit it somewhere. So I'm just gonna create a quick little PHP uh, script here that's just basically, when we submit it, it's just gonna echo back out, this is what was submitted. We're not gonna be worrying about putting in a database or a log file or anything at this point. We're just gonna show that what was submitted. So I'm gonna create a little script here called get.php. And of course it's going to be a PHP application for my server side here. And I am going to say uh, git form. Yeah, that's what I want. Uh, and so what this is doing is it's looking at anything that's submitted as a form git submit. And these first two lines are just stripping out any unwanted characters, hopefully avoiding uh, mess with special characters and or malicious stuff. And then we're just gonna loop through each item that's submitted and print it out to the screen along with its value. 
Uh, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and back into our index here. And we want this checkbox to be part of a form. So let's go in here and I'm going to say form. We're gonna need an action and a method. And we're gonna just do a basic little get method. And we're gonna submit it to our get.php. Down here, let's see, right here, we should be able to say uh, form, let's close our form tag and everything should look good. And it's a form, but we need a submit button. So let's go in here and we'll just add in a basic uh, button. So just a button like so. And I'm just gonna type in submit for the wording on the button. And this type isn't just gonna be a regular button, it's going to be a submit. So it will submit the form for us. There it is. Now, if I click this, we get nothing because we didn't check anything. If we check our checkbox here, hey, it says this is my test is on, uh, which is the name of our checkbox, even though it says primary checkbox in the label. Now, we could obviously grab this, so I can go like 14, and I can copy and paste that, and we can now have two checkboxes, and we can modify them. They each have to have a unique ID, otherwise the checking doesn't work properly. You can see I checked down here, it checks that first one, it's because of the ID, but we're gonna give each item its own random ID, but we need items. So let's go ahead and just copy from our last project, our, um, names.list, or name.list. I don't know why I call it name, it should be names. In fact, I'm going to change that so that uh, name is now names.list, because there's multiple names in there. Oh, that's actually our employee list. What we actually want to copy is our checklist one. One, items list. And again, I'm going to move that to items.list. Okay. Let's go back into our HTML here, and I'm going to delete our little checkboxes, and I'm going to open up another file, which is our main JS script, right there. And I'm wondering, oh, when I pasted in our thing, there was a link to a CSS file. Okay, let me undo our, my, my deletion here this link file should go up here to be proper. Plus we don't want it there more than once. And now I come back down here and delete our tags. Save that. What did I just do? <laughs> and now I'm going to open up our main JS, which has a ready function here. And let's go ahead and create a function called get items. And this will get our list of items and hopefully put them where they belong. Uh, save that uh, real quick. I'm gonna go back into our index file here and we want some place to put those. So I'm going to create an empty div tag. A div tag is just an area that we're going to place some things. We need to give it an ID so we know which div tag we're talking about. And we'll just call this checks because this is where all our check boxes are gonna go. We just need to re remember that's what we named it. Uh, and we're going to come back in here and we are going to now say, um, we're going to do a jQuery request, get it out of that function. And instead of post, I'm just going to do a get, not that I don't think it matters in this particular case, but that's how I'm going to do it. We're not going to add anything to it and we're going to get our items dot list. Perfect. Now, we need to also call that. When the page is done loading, we're gonna say get items. We will refresh this, and we don't have any checkboxes because we haven't added checkboxes yet. But if I open up my console here, you can see that it outputted, outputted uh, everything that's inside that, that text file to our console here. We don't want it in the console, we want it uh, in checkboxes. So let's go ahead and go back here. And what we're going to do is, instead of echoing it to the console here, 
we're going to say take that data because right now it's not formatted lots of times you'll get stuff in json format this is just a plain text file with each item on its own list so what we need to do is break them up into an array it's like a list of things and we're going to say each item is based on each new line so what i'm going to do here is i am going to say um that our var items equal our data that we grabbed and we're going to split it split it split it based on the new line character. So each item is a new line. And, and then we're going to do a for loop here. Change this to items. And this one to say items, but we don't want to print it out to the console. We already did that. What we're going to do here is going to say var item equals. Format that a little bit better. So now we have a variable with our item in it. And what we want to be able to do is take that item and put it into our checkbox template. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say BT for bootstrap. And I'm going to go down to checkbox. Boom. We don't need this CSS because we have that in our main HTML. And we're going to say var and we're going to call this box. And we're going to say equals, and I'm going to do a back tick and a back tick at the end here. That allows you to e easily make a multi-line multi string variable here. And then in here for name, we're going to replace this with the item. So we're going to say dollar sign squiggly brackets, squiggly braces, whatever you want to call them, item. And we're going to do the same thing down here so that the person knows what they're checking. So the name is what's submitted. Down here is what the user sees. So they don't have to be the same thing, but in this particular case, we probably want them to be. Now, we also want each item to have its own unique ID. And we can do that multiple different ways, but I'm just going to generate a random string for each one because we really don't care about the ID here as long as it matches for the box and the labels. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, JavaScript, and I actually have a template for a function will give you a random string based on the length you give it. If you don't give it a length, it will give you a 10 character random string. So we want to make sure that this is inside our for loop because we want each one to have its own unique ID. And we're going to say random string. And then here for our ID, we're going to say ID. And the label for that is the ID, or, and this is the label for that same dollar sign stability. Whoops, ID. Now, if we we have that as a variable, we need to now append that to our div tag. So we're going to find, I think we called it checks, and we're going to append to that our box. And if we refresh, mm, something's not right. What do we do wrong here? Data split items, items, item. Let's go ahead and split it new line. What did I do wrong? Console, oops, hold.log data and let's open up our console log here huh it's outputting it did we call it checks or checks what did we call checks and what did I put did I put checks I think I put checks checks append Box. Box is our. Oh, we're outside the for loop. That would be our issue right there. Got to make sure we're in the for loop for the appending here. We can go ahead and remove our console log here. And here we can go ahead and get rid of our little console window. And if we refresh this, boom, we now can check different items. And when we click submit, it will give us a list of the ones that we checked. Perfect. Except for what's this? What's this? This is a little funny looking thing here. Well, what that is, is because uh, there is a blank line uh, 
inside our text file. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, check for that with an if then statement. What we're going to do here is we're going to say if this else that. Okay. We will copy this line here. Let's go ahead and indent all that. Delete that line. We're going to say, okay, if our item equals nothing, what are we going to do? We can tell it to just ignore empty lines. But I thought it'd be nice if we add it to our formatting. So we're going to do it. If it's blank, we're instead of appending our box, we're going to append a horizontal line. If I could type that properly. So now you'll see when I do that at the end here, there is a horizontal line. It's very light, but you might see that. So why, why would we do that? Well, let's go back into our items.list and we have up here tire stuff and then we have light stuff. Well, if I put in a blank line here, you can see there's now a line dividing up the sections. You can go a little bit further and add, um, you know, headers. But again, the point of these tutorials, as I said in the last one, is just to show that you can continuously add to a program and improve it. We can make a program pretty quick and improve it. Right now, we're pretty much done. We could pretty much stop here and we have a checklist. Again, we can check this and this and this and click submit and it shows those things. If I was to check all of them, it's going to submit all of them. Again, we'd be dumping that into a database or a log if you would, but database would be a better option. Uh, and here we, but we still need to find out who is submitting this. Uh, and again, really in a real life situation, you should never enter your name because you should be logged in as yourself and the computer should know who you are already. I hate when I'm logged in and it asks me who I am. Or in some cases, some businesses will have one login for everybody, which is just horrible. <laughs> you don't know who's doing what. But let's go ahead, just to expand on this tutorial, even though we could stop here, let's add in a name selection. Now we could just put in an input box where a person types their name, which again, as I said in the last video, if you can avoid people typing in information, you really should, because you never know what they're gonna type. <laughs> uh, and they, like my name's Christopher, but I usually go by Chris, but sometimes I write Christopher, sometimes I write Chris, and that could be very confusing. Or maybe I'm just typing fast and I misspell my name. I do that quite often. My, there's a lot of I's in my last name, and when I type fast, I tend to always miss the second to last I. I'm not joking, I mean, just all the time for years now. And that can mess up your, your, your database. So you don't want people to do that. You wanna be able to check from a, a list of names, and uh, you can just have a regular drop down list. But the issue with that is, uh, in my opinion, anytime you have a list that's more than 20 items long, which if you have a lot of employees, it's gonna be more than 20, you want that list to be filterable, or at least, at least you know, searchable in some ways. A regular drop down list, you can usually type the first few characters and jump to it, but it'd be nice if you had a list that actually looked, so I mean, if my name showed up in the list as Chris Acapinti, I can type KRI in a, you know, regular drop down list and would jump to it. But if I typed an OCC, it wouldn't. We're going to create using templates I already have uh, a drop down, a button that gives us a list that we can search through the names and check a name. And then that will put that into an input field that's uh, read only so that we can't edit that. We can only check names that are in the list. So again, we have already copied over our names list here with employee numbers and everything. So let's go ahead and go back into our code here and inside our form, I want to create an input box uh, that has that we're going to input to. Uh, but then outside of the form, I'm going to have my drop down box. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to type in um, BT and choose from my list here. I should have drop down search box. OK, that looks like a lot. Let's go over this. This is CSS to make it look right. We'll move that up to our header. So again, it dumps it all here, but then we're gonna put stuff where it belongs. So we have this drop-down list with items in it already, uh, which we will be replacing. And then we want this, as it says in my little note here, you want that to be in the form for submission. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy those lines or cut those lines, come down to our form, and I'll just go ahead and paste it in here. And up here, of course, I just formatted in something that's not uh, a JSON or uh, JavaScript, so it's going, it messed up my formatting here, but we're gonna move this into our 
code. So let's go ahead, our, our JavaScript code. I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to look. I have 25 lines, 25 DD. And then I'm going to open up our main JS. I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm just going to paste in those lines right here. F6 should format that all for me. And we're going to want this one. So we're going to copy uh, these four lines or cut them and put them up here. Okay. So now we have our, when we click the button, it should show or toggle our drop down list on and off. Down here we have when an item is selected, do something. And here is the filter. Okay, so we should be able to save that. And right now, see it functioning? No? Let's go back to our, oops. Why is, ah. that's why I didn't save this. There we go. Now we have this, I should be able to click this. It gives me the list that we currently have in there. I check that and it adds what I selected to this box, which I cannot change other than by selecting something else in the list list. And I can also do something like if I do you, it's only showing things with you, S, so now I have custom and I can select that from the list. Let's go back and now modify this so that it's going to grab from our list names and put them in there. So let's go ahead and just delete each one of these and delete that, you'll save that. And I will go back into my JS JavaScript here and I'm going to create a function called get names. And I'm going to paste in that line we just copied. And then up here, we all make sure that we call this get names. And I exited out of that, but let's go back into our main JS. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Well, similar to what we did down here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use my template here for my jQuery post. I'm gonna delete the function out of that. And we are gonna grab our name.list, name.list. Actually, I made it names, didn't I? That's right. And now we're not going to pass it any information. And it doesn't matter where this is supposed to get, but I'm going to change it to get just to be consistent with what I'm doing. Uh, let's move this up here. And again, we can output all that to the console. But what we're going to do here is we're going to create a an array called names equals data dot split based on, again, this is a plain text file. Each line is a new thing. And we're going to say here, we're going to say if name does not equal blank, so we're making sure that it's not a blank name, the last line of the file, we're going to then do something. And what are we going to do? We're going to say, we're going to append this. Uh, but what are we going to append it to? We're going to append it to, what do we call our thing here? We're going to append it to our my dropdown. Or, yeah, my dropdown. Uh, back to my main JS. So I'm going to say, boop. And that should be the thing that is the ID of. So we're saying, check each name in the list. Oh, actually, we need to make our for loop, don't we? JS uh, array loop. Delete that, delete that. Add that. Dent everything properly. Yes, everything looks right. And here for names, we're going to go through the loop here. And we're going to say name var name equals names with that current loop. Now we're checking, now we're appending, but we don't want to just append blank stuff. We're going to, let's go ahead and do back tick just because I like the way this looks better. So putting that in back ticks, and instead of about here, we're going to say our name. And we're just putting some basic HTML here saying 
when this item is clicked, do this. And so item select, if we go down here, item select, what it's going to do is it's going to toggle off the list, so it will hide the list, and we're going to then change the item's uh, input, the, the, our input to be the value of what we just selected. You'll see. <laughs> and obviously I typed something wrong. On line 20, we have a character that we don't want. So let's go back up here. Line 20, it said, which it, something's not right. We got back ticks. Oh, we need to move this. Oh, let's undo that. I think I just had my curly. There we go. Okay. Now I can check this list. We have a long list. I can come in here. I can say uh, Foster. I can choose Foster and he's added there. Now I can check rear tires and headlights are good. Submit. And you can see that it was submitted by employee number 25, Oliver Foster, and that uh, he checked the front or the rear driver side tire pressure and the headlights. And that's our application. We can make this look a little bit nicer if we wanted to. Uh, we can hide this input here, but I put it there so they know what name is checked. We could also probably change the name of the button if we wanted. Uh, but let's just real quick go into our index PHP. I'm just going to add in a little bit of spacing here. So right here, I'm going to add in a line break and above the form, I'm going to add in another horizontal line just to make things look a little bit nicer. And you know what? This did not take very long. Let's add in another line break. We could really probably should use CSS to make this look nicer, but I like to cheat with line breaks like that. And we have our application. Here's our checklist. We choose who we are from the list, which we can filter if we want. We can check items off the list. If they are checked as good, they will be submitted. Obviously, uh, there's other things you can do, which again is the point of this tutorial is that you can continue on, continue on. But I did all this while explaining stuff and it only took me 26 minutes and the first five minutes was demonstrating last thing. So this didn't take us much longer than our last application. And we have this and on a mobile device, it would look something like this. So it still look very usable. Um, and you should be able to click. You don't even click the blue here. You can click the words. So anywhere inside these boxes, making it very quick, easy to click with your fingers. But again, if you have a list with like 100 things, you might want to do the reverse. You want to, might have every item already checked and then you uncheck items that have problems. Or maybe you're only checking items that are problems. Are you checking off that you checked it? Are you checking off that it's good? You also might want to add a comment box so people can add comments, which is always a good idea um, for the comment box. Again, there are certain things like name or station or wherever, wherever information like that, you want to use a list, but comments, having a comment box is always a good idea for things that you might not think of. Um, but again, this list can be hundreds of items long. Um, you can also have section checklists where you check and a section gets checked off. But again, we create a base application, submit it to the server. The server right now is just echoing it back to us uh, to put it into a database. It would take another five minutes to create the database and then I have templates for submitting stuff into databases. Um, so yeah, in a half an hour, we less than a half an hour, we created this application for checking things. Um, so super simple. Uh, again, I went quick because it's more of a demonstration than a tutorial. And again, the main point of this, uh, just to be a little repetitive, because when you're teaching people stuff, repetitive stuff is, is good for ingraining it in their brains, is that, as I said in the first tutorial, I don't know if I said it in this tutorial, is that programming is like artwork. As they say with artwork, art is never complete, only abandoned. It's the same with this. I could continue every day adding new features, making this better, tweaking it a little bit, making it look nicer, making it perform better, making it more efficient, making it easier for the user, changing where things are, and you can go on and on and on and on. But to create a base application like this does not take long, you know? So I do thank you for watching, and I ask you to visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description of the video. Go ahead and check that out. I do thank you for watching. There you can search through all my videos. Uh, this, the, this video was a little more 
in depth in a lot of my tutorials. Usually I go over like one thing, like this is how you make a checkbox, this is how you create an input, this is how you submit a form, you know. Uh, but this, this again, this this month, this whole month, I'm going to be going over just creating random applications just to show you the full process of how things go together. And again, I did a lot of uh, template inputs because. I regularly use checkboxes. I regularly make buttons that look like this. I regularly use drop downs like this. So it'd be uh, stupid to uh, type those things out every single time. So I've created my templates to where with a few key presses, I can choose my templates and dump them into my applications. So I hope you've learned something. Uh, comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, did I explain things well for a quick overview? Was I horrible? Um, what would you do different? I know a lot of people are like, I wouldn't use JavaScript and HTML. And well, you know, making things like this are super simple and cross platform. And literally I can give someone the URL to this and it's now on their, their device, whether it be a phone, tablet, uh, desktop, laptop, regardless of operating system, if they have a modern browser, which you should be using a modern browser. So for security reasons, uh, you should be good to go. And it's all already connected to the server, which you would need to be connected to a server anyway to submit the stuff. So I've been talking long enough. Hope that you have a great day. One more thing. I will throw this up on my web server because right now it's running on my desktop computer. But I'll throw it up there and uh, go ahead and um, check it out. Uh, there'll be a link in the description of this video. So go ahead and click on that and you can use this. <laughs> use this to, to look at it. And uh, also uh, so link to the source code so that you can get a copy of this if you want to use it as a template for your project. Anyway, I thank you for watching and as, I hope, as always, I hope you have a great day.